Alrighty. Let's get these two things. And we're good to go. Gonna double check, make sure I have the right lot. 97 it is. I've been here uh, for 42 years. I started in uh, April of 1970 as a summer job and I went on full time before the end of the year. Got it here quick enough before the frost came in. This is just a, a new thing in the last 10 years or so that I've added so I don't have to pick it up off the ground. You know, the back is no longer as young as it used to be. We like the first time that the pet owner comes out to see the monument, that it's clean. The only thing we can't prevent is a bird from autographing it. Well, for those who choose it, it's an important, uh, it's an important place to uh, have closure with the, the loss of their pet. Uh, and people we see, uh, they are members of the family, equal members of the family that just happens to be a dog or a cat or any other small pet that they may have, and they, uh, they feel the need to do a private arrangement. The difference that I've been told, uh, I see it, but I don't, you know, I don't make a big to-do about it because it's where I work and it's kind of like horn blowing. But many people who visit for the first time uh, say there's much more love here than in a human cemetery. By, you know, what's written on the stones. Uh, it's got a little bit more emotion in it than, you know, uh, for a person. Kind of that pet owner relationship shows on the stone. All sorts of things that you really don't see that often in a human cemetery. And this is many people who've come for the first time that, that pick up on it because they, you know, they just read the stones and read the stones on it and they just say, Wow, that's not what I expected to see. I expected to see, you know, small versions of human gravestones. You wouldn't write that on uh, for a person. I don't think. Mostly it's dogs and cats, but we do get, you know, other pets, you know, getting a lot more pocket pets now. You know, people are getting a rabbit or a guinea pig or a chinchilla, a uh, hamster. Uh, the people who come here don't need me. They don't need me to be sad. They've got a, they're sad enough all by themselves. They don't need my sad. So I try to be not as up, but as non-depressing. You know, I mean, if I if you've got a Red Sox hat on, we may talk about the situation at Fenway Park. You know, if people leave here feeling better than when they got here, then I've done my job.